Hello and welcome back to Inside Number 23, my little part of the internet where I talk about my creative life. There's sewing, there's knitting and all kinds of other bits and pieces as well. This month um, I have some rather interesting bits and pieces to talk to you about upcoming, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Um, I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire where I live with my husband, um, our gorgeous daughter and our absolutely scrumptious pug Rolly. It's a little bit grey and dreary today, there's been a lot of wind, a lot of rain but hopefully this podcast can be a little bit of sunshine in your day <laughs> or at least brighten it a little bit, fingers crossed. If this is your first time watching, thank you so much for joining us. And to all of my long-term viewers, hello, welcome back. And thank you so much for coming to spend a little bit of crafty time with me today. I'd like to start by saying a massive thank you to all of the feedback that I got after my first episode um, back after my hiatus. Um, it's clear that a lot of you are really, really enjoying the new format. I am loving putting it together, so thank you so much for that. Um, it just gives me the courage to move forward and that things are being done in the right way, and, and I appreciate that more than I could say. I hope that you've all had a wonderful February. February's a bit of a funny month, I find, because um, January often feels like the longest month known to man. It feels like there are about 150 days in January, and February, in stark contrast, feels like it only has seven. <laughs> so it's flown by really, really quickly, but... Um, I feel like I've got a lot to show for it and it's been a really, really great month. Emrys and I actually went to London uh, earlier in the month, as you all have seen from my introduction video. We went to see Dear Evan Hansen, the musical, which I cannot recommend more highly. It was absolutely wonderful. And it was just lovely to spend some time together, uh, free of parental duties for one afternoon. It was absolutely great. And, um, yeah, I found some time to do some really interesting things, have some really lovely time with the family, and all in all, things are starting to feel a little more balanced than they've been for quite a long time, which is just great. In case I didn't say at the beginning, my name's Katie. <laughs> I always forget to say that. Getting back into the rhythm of podcasting is difficult, but yes, I'm Katie, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. I have quite a lot of interesting bits and pieces to talk to you about today. Um, a full spectrum of, uh, of craftiness. Uh, some things that I haven't talked about really that often before and some things that I haven't ever talked about before. Let's just jump straight in with a few finished objects. As you can see, I am wearing one. Uh, this is my vellum cardigan. Finally, finished, 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 as it wasn't in uh, last month's episode. This is an incredible colourwork cardigan pattern by Carrie Westerman, and I absolutely love it. As you can see, it has this gorgeous colourwork yoke and colourwork on the sleeves as well, and um, I absolutely love it. I knit this in Holst Garn Super Soft, and it's really just such a lovely thing to wear now that it has been blocked now that i have finished everything on my button bands so um the way that i like to finish this um is with grow grain ribbon on both sides of the button band um, that is all done and it looks so good i'm so happy with it literally i've worn it at least a couple of times a week since it was finished so it's definitely become a wardrobe staple already and um, it was such a pleasure to knit as well so it being such a lovely garment to wear is is just wonderful. I'm glad that a lot of you enjoyed the steaking video that I included in last month's episode. I will link to last month's episode down below in case you missed it and want to check that out. So yes, very very happy with how this has turned out um, and yeah, there's not really much more to say. I did talk about it a lot on last month's episode, um, but I do have another finished object to share with you. It shouldn't be too difficult to know what this project is because I talked about it again on my previous episode. It is a baby knit or a toddler knit, shall we say now, for my daughter that was knit out of worsted weight yarn. So it grew very, very quickly and flew off the needles. It is in fact, the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I love it so much. Um, it's just turned out beautifully. I did this rainbow um, striping pattern, which I think looks so adorable. 
and um, yeah it was a pleasure to knit. I love Tin Can Knits patterns, um, their size variety is just fantastic. The fact that, that Posey, myself and Emrys could all get a sweater out of the same pattern because of how it's graded is just superb. They are um, very 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 good value for money and I actually think that this may be a free pattern the flax sweater so I would definitely check it out whether you are looking for your first ever sweater project or you are a dab hand at sweaters I still think it's worth having a look. Um, the lovely thing about this project I did knit a size that is too big for Posy just now. Um, this is the size two to four years and she's just over a year. Um, so she hasn't been wearing it much, but she seeks this sweater out on an almost daily basis because she loves it so much. She loves to carry it around and show it to people and stroke it. And um, she has worn it a few times with the sleeves rolled up and kind of as a long tunic style jumper, which is adorable. But it is so lovely to see something that I have made her be so appreciated even though she does not yet have the vocal ability to tell me good job mummy <laughs> um, she really really does love it so it has spurred me on to knit many many more things for her um, because she deserves them she is by far the most knit worthy person that I know um, I do have quite a few sweater projects in the pipeline for her and um, they're so quick to knit so quick and so satisfying and um, at the moment so appreciated. cast on the Weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry and this is out of the yarn that I frogged back from my row cardigan. Um, it is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter and as I spent such a long time um, frogging it back, uh, winding it into balls, skeining it, washing it, re-skeining it and then putting it back into balls again, I thought it was about time that I actually used it for something other than kind of cleaning because it feels like it's just been um, sitting in the bath or hung up on an airer for a very very long time and it definitely wanted to be back in a project and I have made a little bit of headway on this project so far. Not a massive amount, but a little bit, and um, I wouldn't say I was thrilled because I have had a couple of hiccups. <laughs> More on that on just in just a minute, but it has been really, really great to work on. So let me show you how much I've done so far. So this slightly squished up <laughs> project is my weekender. It's on a little bit of a smaller cable so that I can work on it in the round, um, but it will be a little bit bigger than it appears to be on this. It's um, a nicely oversized sweater and um, I really am enjoying working on it so far. It is knit with the main body of the sweater being reverse stockinette stitch. So it's actually knit inside out so that you don't have to purl all the way around. Um, I know that a lot of people, myself included, prefer to knit than to purl. So this project is, is really, really clever insofar as um, knitting it inside out means that you never have to worry about all of those purl stitches. Just knit, 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 knit. And then when you come to your central stitches, it has a little slip stitch detail, which is just here, as you can see. I think it looks so pretty and I am very happy with how it's looking so far. Now I did hint at the fact that I have had a couple of problems um, and I have. <laughs> this project, in very stark comparison to the um, original project that this yarn was in, uh, looked super, super simple from the pattern, from the pictures, from everything. And to a certain extent it is, but it starts with um, my old friend, the tubular cast on. I have done a tubular cast on before, but not, not recently and not masses of them. So it's not something that I would say that I was a dab hand at. 
And um, funnily enough, the last tubular cast on I think that I did was for the row cardigan that this yarn was in originally. Um, it's a beautiful cast on. It creates um, a cast on edge that basically looks like the knit stitches just run over the edge, uh, just like this. So there isn't a kind of lump where you usually get um, stitching round a cast on. It's great, it looks beautiful. It's a little bit complicated. I wouldn't say impossible, and once you get the knack of it, it's very, very easy to do. But I've I've had a couple of incidents with this sweater and the tubular cast on. I'm not going to lie. Um, the sweater is started in two pieces, um, which means two different tubular cast ons to do. So when I started, I cast on my back piece, and um, I knit all of the ribbing that was needed. And then I looked at the cast on and thought, that doesn't look quite right. I think I've done something wrong there. I'm not quite sure what I did wrong, but it doesn't look as nice as it should do. Hmm. I'll cast on the next piece and see how I get on and see how I feel. So I did just that. I cast it on, did the tubular cast on, and did two rows of rib. And I looked at it and went, that is so much better. That is so much better than the other piece that I've just done. Am I going to be able to live with this? And... Um, if you've watched the podcast before, you will know that my answer was no, I can't live with it looking like that. So I decided that I was going to rip back the um, the piece that I'd already done because I'd only done two rows um, and the old one. I wanted just to start again. I thought I'm just going to start this whole thing again. I'm not that far into it. And um, I think because I'd broken the yarn after the first piece, I wanted to make sure that I had enough yarn to do that piece and do it properly. So I also ripped out the one that I'd just done. It was only two rows, so it wasn't that big a deal. But um, for anyone who's keeping count, so far that is two tubular casts ons. So then I cast on the back piece. It was perfect. Lovely. Looked beautiful. Did all the ribbing and um, used up all of the yarn. Perfect. Um, <laughs> cast on the the front piece did all of the ribbing perfect went to join in the round and realized that one of the pieces was 10 stitches smaller than the other one <laughs> which when you're knitting on something that is I think five and a half millimeter needles 10 stitches is a considerable amount of stitches not to have and it meant that when I was trying to place my my center stitch for the little slip stitch detail, um, I was very, very firmly on the wonk. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I went, okay, so that's that's four tubular cast ons. I guess I'm gonna have to rip this part out and do this one again. And oh, I'd also started working in the round a little bit, so I had to undo that, um, disentangle my two pieces and, um, <laughs> and uh, rip back completely rip out one of the sides again, cast it on again, make sure that it was the correct amount of stitches, do all of the rib, join it in the round, happy days. That was five different tubular cast ons that I had to do. I also won't mention the fact that on the second time that I started to join in the round and started knitting, I managed to Mobius this piece so that one of the pieces had been twisted when I'd started knitting in the round. We won't mention that and the fact that I had to rip back again, but I think that sometimes because um, I get comments a lot that I make a lot of things, I make a lot of garments for myself, I sew a lot of clothes um, and people see the finished object and, and they're very, very impressed and they think I could never do that. That's so impressive. Even people like me um, who do do this a lot, can make lots and lots of mistakes, nobody is infallible and the most important thing is just to kind of take it on the chin and um, try and correct the mistake as best you can. If you can leave it fantastic, if you can leave it and live with it, great. I unfortunately am not one of those people but I, I learn so much from the mistakes that I make. So yes, garment making can be intimidating, but everybody makes mistakes and we learn from them and it's great. And in a way, I appreciate this now so much more <laughs> after all of that hard work and um, losing stitches and Mobius action. And I mean, I, I'm very, very confident with a, a tubular cast on now, which is a good thing, but yes. It's had, we've had our up and downs, which is I think why I haven't made more um, progress on it. But now that it's at this point where it's very mindless, just knitting round and round and round, um, I do think that it will grow quite quickly. 
plus I will be um, traveling at the end of this month so um, this will make great travel knitting I think so very very excited about that. The other project that I have been working on is not a garment, <laughs> it is not knitting, it is in fact crochet and it's a project that I started at the end of last year and I'm not sure how much of it I actually ever shared. Obviously I wasn't podcasting at the point when I started this project but I don't remember sharing it on social media a huge amount either which is interesting for me. I do like to take a picture and upload it to the old Instagram. But um, this is a crochet project that I started with my advent calendar of last year. Uh, myself and three of my dear friends um, swapped mini skeins and put together advent calendars for each other, which is something that I think is now our third year or second year of doing so. It's a really, really lovely tradition. I absolutely love doing it and opening a little parcel from a dear friend every day is such a treat. But um, I always struggle finding something to do with my mini skeins. Um, I do have a granny stripe blanket, which I love, but I did want to try something a little bit different this year. And then I discovered Sandra of Cherry Hearts pattern um, called the Battenberg Blanket. Now very much like Battenberg Cake, which is divided up into lots of little squares and then wrapped up in marzipan, the crochet squares in the Battenberg Blanket, um, the colourful squares that you can use with your mini skeins are interspersed with a neutral colour or a white um, to kind of tone down the craziness of the mini skeins, which I really, really liked. And um, if you haven't seen Sandra's crochet patterns before, they are absolutely beautiful. She is a crochet wizard, so I'd very, very much recommend that you give her a look if you haven't seen her work before. But long story short, I had over December crocheted up a whole lot of these lovely squares. <laughs> I have lots and lots of them because I used my... Um, advent calendar but I also used up um, a lot of scrap yarn that I had lying about and I decided it was high time that I took them and started to join them together and here is the start of my Battenberg blanket. So as you can see I have my little um, little colourful squares that have all started to be joined together with a white. This white is actually um, West Yorkshire Spinner's signature four ply in their milk bottle colourway. It's a lovely off-white colour and you kind of do a join as you go with these white squares and um, just adding them in and adding the colourful squares around them and it's it's a really really lovely project and I've been enjoying it. Um, I found it more difficult this month to focus on bigger projects so things like garments much as I love them just haven't been quite hitting the spot for me. Um, something like this that's a little less intense because it's just a blanket eventually it's just going to be a big rectangle um, it's it's just felt a little bit kinder on my brain and plus I just really really enjoy picking which one of these colourful squares goes um, kind of around the others. The other lovely thing about this project is that Posy is completely in love with crochet, in, in particular with these squares. Um, we've been having so much fun sitting with this pot and taking all of the little squares out and looking at the colours and sharing them with everybody around. She likes to share them with Rolly and with Emrys and <laughs> she just loves them. She carries them around, she plays with them and it's it makes my heart just grow 10 sizes, seeing um, my little girl taking something that I've made and having such amount of fun with it and just seeing her joy at seeing all of the different colours and the feel of the yarn under her fingers. Um, she's also started um, pinching my work in progress blanket whenever she can. She likes to um, drag it off with her and stroke it and wear it as a hat and put it on rolly. And so I imagine that this blanket will probably end up being hers. But don't tell her that I said that because I would very much like to keep it for myself um, because I'm loving how it looks and it's it's just wonderful. It's so squidgy and soft and lovely. I can't wait to see it grow and turn into something really special.
As I said at the beginning of this video, I have been exploring all different kinds of crafts or just, just activities that involve me getting stuck into things and getting my hands into things and um, I'm really really happy with how it's all going so far. I find it really interesting to see how things work and something that I've wanted to try for a really really long time has been re-upholstery. I think I've been watching too many episodes of <laughs> Escape to the Chateau, a fantastic programme if you haven't watched it I very 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 much recommend, but um, the main leading lady of Escape to the Chateau, Angel Strawbridge, does a lot of re-upholstery and made it look so simple. She makes everything look simple to be fair, but I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to try my hand at something different so I have put together a little video for you about my reupholstery adventure and I really hope you enjoy. Hello everybody, you are joining me on a day off today. Um, I am baby free and ready to rumble um, and you're actually joining me in the room that I am working on today. This is my little sanctuary in our house, this is my sewing room and one thing that I wanted to have for this room was a really nice stool for my sewing area. Um, I have used just um, a random chair that we had for the longest time in here but what I really really wanted was a stool that fit with the new table I couldn't really find anything that I wanted new. Um, <laughs> things were coming out incredibly expensive and they still weren't really what I wanted. And then I came across a website called Vinteria and um, they sell lots of vintage and antique furniture. And I actually found a pair of stools on this website that I absolutely fell in love with. They were a proper bargain. This is um, a kind of 1960s kitchen stool. Very, very happy with it, absolutely love it. It's great construction. It's um, a wood finish that I really, really like. I actually have a desk which is very, very similar to this, which is nice. But they have this kind of laminate vinyl top on them and I don't hate it, it doesn't make me super mad, but um, I'm not a massive fan and I really, really wanted this room to have something a little bit customised and a little bit personal. I'm a big fan of Rifle, Rifle Paper Co and their beautiful fabric designs and so when I saw this, um, I was very, very, very excited and I knew that this would be perfect for this room. This is I wouldn't say a tutorial, more a kind of upholster along with me because I am by no means an expert. <laughs> I wouldn't even class myself as an amateur. I'm like not even at amateur level yet, but um, it should be fun and I thought that you would enjoy. So here we go, upholstery, it's happening. So first things first, we need to remove the seat pad from the stool. The construction of this stool is pretty cool, which means I just need to turn these little toggles um, to detach the stool and the seat pad just pops out, just like so. And it's relatively simple, I think, to see how we're going to need to proceed with this stool in order to start the reupholstery process. As you can see, the entire edge of the seat pad has been held in place with all of these little tacks. So first things first, we're going to have to remove them. Yes, there's quite a lot of them and we'll have to remove every single one before we can start to reupholster. Lucky I have this handy dandy tack removal tool, which was super cheap off Amazon. Um, so I'm going to do that by hand to start off with. My main advice if you're going to try doing something similar is to just go nice and slow and um, try not to put too much pressure on the pins or the tacks. Some of them do take a little while to come out, as you can see here, they're a little bit stuck. Um, but I just needed to make sure I didn't tear the vinyl because that made it even more difficult to get these tacks out. This did take quite a long time, so I'm going to speed things up a little bit for your viewing pleasure. I wish that I could have been this fast in real life. Alas, that was not the case. At last, the final tack has been removed and I can peel away the laminate to reveal the padding of the seat pad 
below. Now for the fun part. I've cut my Rifle Paper Co fabric into two pieces because I do have two stools and I've laid this piece out ready to pop my seat pad onto it. Now I decided to retain the original padding because although it was a little discoloured it was actually still in really good condition so I'm just putting it straight down onto the fabric. I was going to use this hammer to do the tacks but then I realised that that would be a really stupid thing to do and it was going to take way too long. So um, I went and purchased myself um, a little stapler off Amazon as well. Other suppliers are obviously available. So we're going to start stapling the fabric to the stool. You start on the edge that's kind of furthest away from you as I've done here and pop a staple in. There it is and then you go on the opposite side. These staples need to go in the center of your seat pad and you need to make sure that your fabric is being held nice and taut while you do this. In goes staple number two. Now, you've probably guessed, we're going to do the other two edges in the same way. We're now going to add a few more staples for additional security. So on either side of our central staple, we're going to go along adding a few more staples on each side, as you can see here, but making sure to stay about an inch and a half away from the corner, because we're going to be dealing with that in just a moment. And as you've probably guessed, we're going to repeat this on all four sides. And yes, I was pretty pleased with the process so far. Now it's time for the slightly more fiddly part, which is dealing with the corners. I'm going to start by trimming off the excess fabric so that I don't have any unnecessary bulk in the way. Um, but I will link below to a few tutorials that I watched before um, tackling a corner myself, as I think that those will be much more helpful for you if you want to try something similar yourself. With the corners, ooh, corners, what we want to do is ideally create a nice smooth edge so there aren't too many nasty folds. So first and foremost, we're gonna secure everything back with one staple, like I've done here. And then you kind of do a couple of little folds um, before you staple again, just making sure that everything's nice and smooth. Again, I will link to some tutorials for this. I appreciate it's not particularly clear. Like I said, this isn't specifically a how-to. This is more a follow along, but add a couple of staples once you're happy with how it looks from the front. Quite a few staples, as you can see here. And then just repeat on the other side of your corner. I'm not gonna lie. I think that's a pretty sexy corner, don't you? Nice and smooth and pretty. Very, very happy with that, considering that this is my first time doing this. And then it's just a matter of repeating this whole process for every one of the four corners. It is a little bit fiddly and a little bit time consuming, but I found it really, really enjoyable. And look at what I made! I really am properly chuffed with how this project turned out. And here it is, back on the stool, looking, if I do say so myself, quite spectacular. I repeated the entire process for stool number two, and as you can see, I'm very, very happy with the result. All in all, I think this was a thoroughly successful foray into reupholstery and if it's something that you're interested in yourself I very very much recommend it. I'm feeling a bit smug because I'm actually sitting on one of the stools that I reupholstered <laughs> and all of my um, works in progress and bits and pieces are sitting on the other so they're already becoming very very useful and they're super comfy and I still can't really believe that um, I did that all myself. Uh -huh. 
enough of the smugness. <laughs> The last few projects that I'm going to be sharing with you this episode are actually some cross-stitch projects. For anyone who isn't a long-term viewer of the podcast, I have always really, really enjoyed cross-stitch. It was one of the first activities that actually got me into crafting. Um, it was something that I used to do before I even thought about knitting garments and sewing my own clothes. Um, so I've been doing it for a very, very long time. But it has been a while since I have dipped in an out of it. The thing that spurred me on to get my cross stitch out again was my 20 for 2020 list that I shared on Instagram. Um, one of the things that I've put on this list, um, perhaps a little bit um, unachievable, who knows, but it was to finish up my oldest languishing whip, which happens to be a cross stitch project, which I have here. This project has been with me since before I was at college doing my degree. And considering that I graduated from college over 10 years ago, <laughs> this project is going on for 13, 14, 15 even years. So <laughs> it is about time that it got finished, but um, it's not really close just yet. I have started working on it again and it's looking really, really good, so I'm happy. But um, I thought that I would just give you a little update now because I'm not gonna share it super often. It's, it's very intricate, so hours and hours of work can look like there's not much difference. So I can't imagine that I will be sharing this with you again probably for the next several months just because it's so difficult to tell when progress has been made. But let's have a little starting point for the year, shall we? This is my cross stitch. It is absolutely beautiful, if I do say so myself. It is um, a cross stitch version of an illustration of the princess and the swans and Oh my goodness, it is beautiful. As you can see, it is an all over kind of covered cross stitch. Every single bit is covered, so there are no gaps whatsoever, which is why it has taken me such a long time to do. But I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there is a little bit of glittery thread in there as well, which is beautiful. I love this. And it's pretty lucky that I'm still so in love with it as I am, because like I said, it's going on for 15 years old. Um, and it'd be very easy for me to say, oh, I don't like that at all anymore. But because it has this lovely kind of ageless fairy tale feeling, um, I'm still very much in love with it. It is worked on in blocks, so this is the block that I'm working on at the moment. So you can see these tiny little gaps where the stitches go in and um, I will be adding to it as I go. I have been working on it quite a lot. See there's not many uh, stitches left to put in here but there are so many different colours. I would say that there's probably 150 different colours to be added into here. Um, so it is slow going. It needs a really good clean as well. So I'll have to be super careful about cleaning this once it's finished. But, um, but yes, this is what I have been working on when I get the time. Um, I have been keeping it nice and, and folded and um, looked after when I'm not working on it. So it's not gonna get damaged or anything like that, which is great. I don't think I've been as careful with it <laughs> in years gone by. Uh, so it's it's pretty good going that it's actually still in that good condition and it is a bit dirty but um, it happens when you start things when you're a lot younger and you don't necessarily understand that you need to store things in a way that they will last but um, I binge watched the entire new season of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix whilst working on this and it was it was really, really lovely. It was a treat. It is something that I'm gonna be dipping in and out of because it is so time intensive. Um, in comparison, I would say that knitting a garment, which is still a lengthy process, is like a speedy project in comparison. So, you know, it's a bit of pie in the sky thinking that I would get it finished by the end of this year. Please, I just want it finished. I just want it finished so that I can have all of my long-term whips done. That, this is the last one. This is the last one that I have that's still um, languishing. So 
I'm positive, thinking positively. Uh, so send me your positive vibes, everybody, that I will get this done. In quite stark comparison, I also have another cross-stitch project that is finished. Here it is in all its glory. Isn't it just amazing? Um, I am so happy with this. You can probably see the camera reflected in the glass. I have framed it. Let me try and angle it a little bit for you. So it says, home is where the heart is. I'm so, so happy with this. Uh, the pattern is by Stitch Rovia. And it actually um, didn't take that long to stitch up. I've been doing it in the evenings. Um, I think there are only maybe about five or six colours in the whole thing. But it has this lovely retro effect. I took extra care to make sure that I mounted it properly so that when I put it in the frame it would look lovely and yeah it's one of my first finished objects of 2020 and it's going to be going to its new home very soon and I'm sure that it will be appreciated I really kind of want to keep it I think it's quite special but um but yes here it is one of my first gifts of this year and it just feels lovely to have made something that is very special but I know will be loved and appreciated in the home that it's going to. So yeah, a little bit cross stitch mad. I think I'm going to be taking a break from cross stitch um, just for a little bit but I think that there may well be some more cross stitch projects in the future, maybe once I've finished that massive one, who knows. <laughs> That is everything for this episode of Inside Number 23. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of crafty time with me this month. I hope that the weather isn't getting you down if it's as bleak where you are as it is here and that you have a wonderful month until I see you again. Um, happy crafting and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Inside Number 23. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can find my personal account as Miss Lavelli and the specific podcast Instagram is inside.number.23. If you want more details of all my knitted items, you can find me as Miss Lavelli on Ravelry. See you soon.